Today I'm going to be doing two upgrades you can do for your front door straight away. Uh, one, I'm going to be making this wreath. It's gorgeous wreath, so if you want to know how to make it, really easy. Um, just stay tuned. And the other thing is, uh, just a quick upgrade to a doormat that I bought in Home Bargains. I've been looking at star doormats online and they were about £18 and my doormat cost me £3 and just the price of putting the star on it is next to nothing. So if you want to do these things, let's just get on and do them. So the first upgrade is a doormat. So you need a doormat. I got mine at Home Bargains. I think it was three or four pounds. You need a paper plate just to put your paint on, a pair of scissors and some of this sticky plastic you know that you get in shops to line drawers with and some of that. I use it for my silhouette um, machine for stencils. A uh, flat brush, some black paint. Now I've been looking at these doormats online, they're just coir doormats like this and they have a big star on them and they're way way expensive just to get a star on them so let's just try and uh, do that ourselves so what you need is you need a piece of plastic and to say find any stencils or anything that you, know, if you don't have that but you have the plastic i'm just gonna you hand a star and see how we go. I've got a silhouette, I've got star stencils, but I'm trying to make this that anybody can do it. So let's just get on with drawing a star. Should maybe I've got a sharpie so you can see it. I'll draw it with pen first. Now I'm just going for like, nothing fancy. Like it's going to be a bit primitive because I'm drawing it myself, which means that. It's not going to be exactly perfect. Now I think that is pretty much what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm hoping that you can see this. I'll get a sharpie pen and uh, I'll just um, I'll just draw around it so that you can see it on camera before I cut it out. So this is a handy way to do it. If it's a simple stencil like this, it's a handy way to just do something like this. It means that you don't need any special. And I really, I just want you to be able to do this without having to go and buy anything special. Now, as you can see, it's really quite a primitive star shape. It is not, by any matter of means, perfect. And I'm going to cut it out as straight as I can. I'm just going to flip it up that way. There. So it's just a simple star. Nothing fancy. Best way to do this is try and get rid of your excess first so that it's easier to work around. We're going to mask and tape this down before we stencil it. So just get rid of all the bits you don't need until you've got this. Now, how I go about doing it is Stick my scissors through the middle and start with a, you know, like a shape that you can manage to manoeuvre your scissors round. And then what I would do is I'd probably just go up to the other point of the start. Until you cut it all out. Now as I said... It's not going to be the straightest star, but you're, you're, you're stenciling on a coir mat, it's never ever going to be completely perfect, so um, I wouldn't worry about it. Now, get rid of the bits that you don't want, cut the label off your doormat. And you need to decide on the position of where you're going to stick it down and how you're going to stick it down and in what way you want it. So um, I'm trying to think of what way I had it. I think it was this way when I cut it out. So just get your, your edges of your sticky plastic, which is easier said than done. A few hours later, I'll probably be able to get this unpeeled. <laughs> right, okay. 
you wouldn't peel it all off to begin with until you've got your sort of rough positioning. Now, how did I want this to go down now? Sure, there's a less cat handed way of doing that actually. I just want to lay it down again because I want to make sure I've got it the way I had it and I drew it, which was I think this point was at the top. So, is that sort of central? Now, you know what I always do, I boil it and it's never central. Yeah, and then this isn't easy because it doesn't want to stick. Just try your best to kind of stick it down. Now, stenciling this, I'm not going to lie, is not going to be that easy. You're going to have to really hold on to your areas while you do it. So you need to get your black paint. Get some out on your plate and get your flat brush. Offload your paint. Now, you, you normally you'd offload loads, but because it's coir, now, you need quite a lot. I've never stenciled a doormat before, so. It's just I've been looking at the ones uh, online and from companies that sold them and I wanted one with a black star on it um, and I did but I didn't want to pay the price it's okay in the middle you can put as much paint on as you want it's the edges you don't really want them removed but because it's not really a sticky surface that you're you know, like the vinyl doesn't particularly want to stick to the mat. trying to really get it down in the fibres of the mat and I think maybe I'm going to have to let this dry a bit and maybe do another coat over the top of it to get it the real black that I want it to be and once this is done I'm just going to get some regular sealer and I'm just going to spray it over the top of it to seal it now people are going to walk on this and uh, I don't want it coming back off it is acrylic so it shouldn't but Just gonna let it dry a bit and then we're just gonna do that same process over again you could cut out anything or if you've got mylar stencils you could use them I just didn't want I wanted to show you an easy way of doing it and as I said my stars a little bit primitive it's not perfect but I think it's gonna end up quite cute and cute is what I'm aiming for. It's just simple ways to upgrade your door for spring, really. Just to give up your front door a little bit of an upgrade without spending a fortune. Right, just going to pause, let it dry and come back to it in a minute. So I've let it dry a little bit and I've went back over the top of it. And now I'm just going to gently just pull off. sticky tape and there we have it now this cost me I think it was three or four pounds and the ones that I saw online were 18 just because it's got a star in it but I'll give you a close-up of all this at the end so that's the first upgrade upgrade number two is a wreath now wreaths make 
Earnings can look quite cheerful and teamed with the doormat. It kind of like boosts your instantly your front door looks or your back door, whatever door looks nice. Now this is the wreath that I made at Christmas time. Um, if you go back and look at how I made it, um, it's a Christmas wreath and I made it out of some garden moss, some chicken wire and some bubble wrap and this is how they end up looking when they're made. So what I'm doing is I'm just revamping this because, you know, I took everything off it. Um, I've got quite a few of these and as they get older the moss kind of turns brown and they look really good. But the good thing about them is, is you can add anything to them because they've got the chicken wire. So I've got this, but you can use any wreath form, whatever you have. Um, I've got our Made by Marley word hello, which I want to put on it. Um, I've got some wire cutters, some thin gauge wire, a selection of just flowers that I had, just stuff I had. I've also got here, I'm not sure I'm going to use it, a rusty bell. And the last thing I've got, which you can use anything you want if you can find these sorts of things, is this is the only thing that I think you might have trouble finding is, obviously I'm a potter, so I've made some ceramic um, toadstools, which I'm going to paint. And I'm going to put them in the wreath, but you could put whatever you want in them. Um, you don't have to have these at all. It's just I'm wanting to go for a sort of spring, sort of kind of mixed flowers, kind of like with a white hello and things. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm just going to go away and I'm going to paint these little toadstools. Now they're quite heavy because they are they are ceramic, um, but because of the, the chicken wire, I'll be able to wire them in um, wherever I want them. So I'll paint them and then we're ready to go. If you gather everything else we need up, we'll be ready in a minute. So what I've done is I've painted the little toadstools, the little ceramic toadstools. Now, I've been thinking about this because not everybody has ceramic toadstools. Um, you maybe could have a look for something in a pound shop, something that's cute, or um, you could use paper clay, or you could just use a household item and spray it. But it's just to give it a little bit of interest, and if you don't have them, it doesn't matter. Um, it just it just I happen to have them. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is is I'm going to decide where my words gonna go and I think I'm gonna put it right across the middle like this. Now if you remember from the Christmas one, if you watch the Christmas video, um you can just attach it with a little bit of wire through the chicken wire and it keeps it all nice and secure. Um so you just need to get your ends of your wire and thread it through and twist it. Now I'm not gonna cut those off just yet um because I do want, um, I might want to attach some flowers as far up as that. And just the same at the other side. Now at Christmas time, if I recall, I think the video, the word I used there, the Made by Marley Craft Bank, was Mary. Um, and I just used the word Mary and I did a rusty finish um, with it. So you can buy these craft banks from us um, at www.madebymarley.co.uk or you can find something similar or you don't need to have words in it at all remember this video is really about just a quick up upgrade of your front door it's not so much about what I've used to do it it's just I'm just trying to show you that a wreath and a doormat can make things look pretty good so that's on and secure now um, I'm just going to tighten this down here as well that's not going anywhere. Now, I want to have, I'm wondering whether I want to have my toasters kind of like this, or whether I want to have them sort of side on. This is where it gets tricky, deciding what you want. I think I'm going to have them both down here, facing, um, facing this kind of direction. And again, I'm just going to wire them on with chicken wire, uh, with thin gauge wire through the chicken wire to hold them. Um, I might need a couple of pieces. I do have my hot glue gun at the ready um, because I'm not sure if I might have to glue some flowers in. So I'm just gonna let this sit where it wants to sit. And I'll flip it around in a minute. on this because it's quite heavy. So I'm going to put my first piece here and we'll try and cover that with some flowers. 
and the second piece down the bottom here. Currently it just wants to move around and I might have to put a little bit of hot glue on it but we'll see how it goes with the second piece of wire. Good at that. Oh, maybe not. It's nice and tight there. And yeah, it doesn't look like it's see it wants to keep turning this way, but I want it to go this way, so I always use a hot glue gun. I'm sorry my children, yet again are screaming in the background. Um, uh, this one here I think is going to go on nice and, nice and neat. Maybe it should have been better if I put them both together but just down there and it's going to go on here. So it's just about fiddling around, I mean, I'm trying to do this pretty quickly, but I mean, if, it, if I wasn't doing it on camera, um, I'd probably be a little bit more apt to take the time to I'm hoping when I get my flowers on it, they'll kind of keep these a wee bit more secure. Now I want this to go this way, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start weaving some of these, some of these flowers through it. So I'm going to start with these kind of daffodils, and I've got wire cutters, and I'm just going to cut them off because remember I can put it through um, where the chicken wire is, so it shouldn't be too arduous now start here and see if I can get these to stop wobbling around Again, the object is to try and stop my my toadstools from waggling about. moment I'm just using the flowers as sort of anchor points um, for the toadstools to stop them shifting around. the front of that tool still there just to hide the wire that it's attached on with. So, that 
didn't quite do it. We could do with a little something in here. And I might have to glue some of these on. So I'll leave those little ones to the side right now. And I'm going to put some more sort of daffodils. Blue daffodils at the top. And I have this. I might glue this on. I'll glue this one to here because that looks like good positioning. This one's got quite a thick stain, so I'm thinking this might be quite a good one to keep from a toadstool from working on her own. Yeah, still needs a, I still might need to have a little bit of glue. I'm going to cut some of these off just to glue where I've wired the um, toadstool on, so I'm just don't snip them too much because if you ever snip them, they'll fall right apart. because it keeps on leaking and a little bit of glue here to cover that one now it's coming on but I think it needs some of these like leaves to give it some volume movement so I'm just going to cut off these and I'm going to go right down into here and cut off cut off these stems that I'm going to just need to cut them off. Hmm, there's quite a few different bits of wire. really is handy having the chicken wire because you really don't have to you know like and the good thing about it is is you can take bits off of it and uh, you know like when you want to update it for sort of spring uh sorry summer you can just add you know like take some if you think oh well that's not really you know it's not it's a bit springy and i'm wanting something different then you can just with the chicken wire you can just take it off. I mean that's what I did literally with the Christmas one. I just took all the the Christmas greenery off because it was all just you know poked into it. It wasn't take this one here, put some colour up this end. one seems to be facing in the wrong direction. I might try and bend it that way a bit. Now I need to have one solitary. I'm wondering whether I want to put this rusty bell in it. Maybe that's just overkill. I definitely want to put one here. So when you want to finish it off and all your stems are going this way, 
when you want to finish it you just put um, a flower going in the opposite direction through the wire in the opposite way that finishes off and covers up this pink one here I think I'm going to have to put a little bit of that glue in this one that just doesn't for some reason want to stick in there now the last bit here is I just want to take this I've got one actually I'll do that see I'll just plug and do this that glue gun string is not good I just want to cover this little bit here Stools. and they're in there just trying to get rid of hot glue strings I've got one left and I think I'm going to put it up this end and I'll see if I'm going to the problem with hot glue is, is the strands go everywhere they drive me insane put that there and let's see if some of these can maybe poke out of it. And put this one in here. Here like that. I'm not quite sure where that one there's going. Yeah. Uh, so as you can see, I've used every bit of greenery. Now this, the tulips were really cheap. I think they came from home bargain, so there was no, no big expense in those. The leaf form was one that I made at Christmas out of moss and bubble wrap, so not a huge amount of outlay there either. So transferring your front door for, for the, you know, after winter shouldn't cost too much. If you've got bits, just have a rummage, see what you've got. That's it. That's that's as complicated or easy as you want to make it. It's a wreath form made out of bubble wrap covered in garden moss with chicken wire over the top of it. Um okay, craft blank word, you have to buy that or find a word um in, in in another shop that you could put on or don't bother with the words and just some spring stuff and some bits and pieces. Some of this was just bits and pieces I had and uh, use all of it use the leaves use everything and that is ready to hang so we've got our lovely doormat and we've got our hello and uh, that's ready for the door so this is the wreath that we made today with the hello and the flowers and the toadstools and everything and here is a close-up of the awesome doormat that we also made just with a star on it it's come out really well so two things to upgrade your front door for not a lot of money um, just a quick sort of tutorial on both really um, if you like this video please share it um, if you want to see more videos like this 
think about subscribing and if you want to leave a comment of things that you maybe want me to try and do next or little upgrades you can do around the home just leave a message in the comments below and uh, thank you very much i've been lay off from me by marley